stay the way it is. It won't move, it won't rotate. Wow, gear B is like the reaction of ATP. It's freely moving. Some, it's like so ready to proceed. Now, when we talk of reaction coupling, we are linking the two reactions. So, what we are doing is this. Here's what we are doing. We have B. Let's say you've joined the two gears. Once you release the brakes, what is going to happen to gear B? What do you think? Gear B will move towards direction while it will force gear, gear A to move at the opposite direction. To move the clockwise. Do you see what is happening? <laughs> Guys, this is classically what reaction coupling is doing. It's transferring energy from one reaction, which is freely proceeding, to a reaction which is not able to proceed, forcing that energy to drive the reaction in a way it was not supposed to. Guys, does this make sense? Yes. <laughs> If it doesn't make sense at this point, guys, there is a room. Go and make peace with it in the library. <laughs> All right. So, guys, this is the principle of reaction coupling. So, basically, reaction coupling would involve the transfer of energy from one reaction, which is freely proceeding, mainly from a substance which has high energy, into a substance which would actually have low energy and forcing that reaction to proceed. This is what reaction coupling is doing. So somebody is going to ask a question, well, why is it so easy for ATP to actually have high energy and give off the energy? Well, it's in the nature of the structure of ATP itself. In fact, all the molecules that are high energy have something in common. And it is the fact that they are actually unstable. They are unstable. Let me show you. When you look at the structure of ATP, it has a pentose sugar ribose, which is actually attached to three phosphates. Okay? Okay, let's do our with this. Not in people's minds, we pray. And there. And then here on the Anomerica one, there is adenine. Nitrogenous base adenine attached in an end glycosidic linkage, right? So it has a nitrogenous base, it has a pentose sugar and phosphate, it's a nucleotide. Because of the phosphates that are there to start with, this molecule becomes unstable. Why? Because the phosphates are repelling each other. Negatively charged phosphates close to each other would have repulsion to them causing instability. When ATP is hydrolyzed to ADP, what is happening is that one phosphate is coming off. When a phosphate comes off, this phosphate is off, you're going to have ADP, adenosine, 
diphosphate, right? This has less repulsion than the first one because it has three phosphates, isn't it? So this becomes more stable. So if you are trying to make ATP from ADP, what you are actually doing is you are making something unstable more unstable. Do you get the sense? This is why you need to find the plus 7.3 kilocalories that came off in the process where this was coming out. Charge minus 7.3 kilocalories. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. So instability makes the molecule have high energy. Right? Another thing would be a lack of resonance where charges cannot move from one to another, to one point to another, the lack of resonance would actually make the molecule be unstable and hence have high energy. Which also goes on to tell you that lack of the presence of resonance would actually make a molecule have low energy. Also, stability would make a molecule have lower energy. Right? It also goes on to tell you that react molecules that are more stable, such as molecules after isomerization, they will actually have lower energy. So, isomerization, ionization, right? Um, isomerization, ionization, resonance would actually make a molecule become more stable. Is that clear? Therefore, when you look at the structures of most of the molecules that will have high energy, they will be highly unstable. Somebody mentioned that GTP is a high energy molecule. Why? Because the difference between ADP and A and ATP and GTP is that what is here is just guanine. And because there's only guanine there, you still have the repulsion there. The molecule is still unstable. Do you get the sense? And hence, it will still have high energy. He actually said that they have the same amount of energy. Yes, they do, because they are both nucleotides. Do you get the sense? Get the sense? So, if you are to look at this closely, it will become very easy for you to actually identify the molecules that will have high energy. I know you only knew a few, but let me tell you, they are quite a number. Number one, high energy molecules. Before I tell you what high energy molecules we have as examples, I should tell you that a high energy molecule is defined as any molecule which after hydrolysis would give off at least minus 25 kilojoules per mole. If it gives off that much energy, it's considered a high energy molecule. And before you get scared and say, hey, you said ATP is a high energy molecule but it has minus 7.3, Guys, check the units. This is kilocalories, this is kilojoules per mole. If you have kilojoules, to convert them to kilocalories, divide by, is it 4 point what? 4.128 or something? Those of you that are able to remember that, you divide it by that value, it becomes kilocalories. Which means that ATP, which has 7.3, 7.3 multiplied by 4.128 will be somewhere minus 31. For something, right? Therefore, this is a high energy molecule. Is that clear? These are just units, guys. If this still confuses you, try being confused about the fact that one kilometer is much further than 800 meters. If that confuses you, be confused. About this. <laughs> All right? Okay. Now, high energy molecules. There are a number of high energy molecules that you can think of. One of them is your favorite, ATP. In fact, you can show that if you change the nucleotide, the nitrogenous base here, you still end up with a high energy molecule. Put guanine, guanosine, 
triphosphate will have high energy. Put adenine adenosine triphosphate ATP has high energy. Put uracil uridine uridine triphosphate has high energy. Cytosine cytidine triphosphate has high energy. Right? Thiamine thiamine triphosphate has high energy because mm -hmm. what is only changing is there. You see what I mean? So these are all going to be high energy molecules. In fact, ATP, ADP, AMP all have high energy due to their instability. Therefore, let's just say nucleotides have high energy without even wasting time to mention all of them because they have the same structure. Right? Let me go to the other one he had mentioned. He mentioned NADH plus H plus and FADH2. Guys, these have high energy also. Yes, they do because, excuse me, these molecules are highly, highly reduced. Reduced molecules tend to have high energy. What are these molecules reduced? Well, when you go to the notes on fatty acid synthesis, you will see that in the synthesis of these molecules, they are actually synthesized by a process called reductive biosynthesis, where the molecule is being sequentially reduced as it's being formed. The, core, the source of the reducing equivalence is NAD. H plus H plus. So this will be giving hydrogen to a growing fatty acyl chain. Fatty acid, as it's growing, as it's being made into a long chain, it's sequentially getting hydrogen. So just go to the notes to the to the discussion on fatty acid synthesis, you see that this is exactly what happens. So you might be familiar with NADH, and then you should know that there's also NADH. These two do not refer to the same thing. NADH is used as a source of energy in the electron transport chain. How? When this hydrogen and that hydrogen have been given to oxygen, the oxygen which you breathe in, it will lead to generation of energy. And the amount of energy it will give you is about 2.5 molecules of ATP. We should be able to show this in the next class. In the electron transport chain. Well, FAD will give you about 1.5 ATPs. NADH would be used to synthesize reduced equivalents such as fatty acids. And those fatty acids, when you are starved, will be broken down in a process of oxidation, particularly bitter oxidation, and produce NADH and FADH2, which will enter into the electron transport chain and be used to production of ATP. This is something you guys are going to know by the time you and I stop talking. All right? Not today, though. Other things could be like FMN. Reduced equivalents, in essence, become molecules with high energy. Which other molecules have high energy? Three. Phospho guanines have high energy. Sounds a bit new. Well, example phosphocreatine. Phosphocreatine is a high energy molecule. This is the form in which energy is stored in the muscles. 